Alright guys, Touchcrab here back again today. I hope you're enjoying your day so far and today we're going to discuss the London Royal Ravens. Yesterday they confirmed their roster officially for the CDL 2021 season and it's a pretty good roster in my opinion. I actually like a number of elements of this team as we're going to talk about here over the coming minutes. The real question mark is of course though, Atlanta Phase, Dallas Empire, Chicago Huntsman. Those are the three big name teams in the CDL for 2021 that have star studded rosters. All of these rosters that are going to get confirmed over the coming weeks here including the London Royal Ravens yesterday how well can they compete with those rosters that is certainly the question mark but if we do get once again like eight team events where maybe like FaZe and um, the Chicago aren't present and Dallas get upset early on could London win an event I definitely think it is possible with this team but not incredibly likely especially given the elephant in the room that Scraps and Waskin are no longer on this team as we're going to talk about later today where they might potentially end up intrigued to hear your thoughts in the comment section below like if you guys enjoy the video subscribe if you are new as always I would greatly appreciate it really helps out the channel thank you for doing that. Before we get into things, this from John. Never give up fighting for those dreams. Looks like he's still in this like medical center that he was talking about a week or so ago now. So uh, yeah, definitely wishing John the best. Hopefully he can get back to full health and start competing again in the Call of Duty professional scene if that is the thing that has been holding him back, of course, as we discussed. Maybe it's not a few days ago. Alex tweets this out as well. So you've got like the bird emoji here. What's going on? Is it potentially the Royal Ravens? And what do you know just a couple of hours later? The Royal Ravens confirmed representing the UK with a point to prove watch out because the Ravens are coming so they confirm the lineup that's going to be Shawnee of course that we knew was going to be on the team for a while ago he was extended the fact that he was extended already is kind of an interesting question mark right because initially this season he was meant to be a substitute he actually wasn't even meant to be playing on this team given the fact that Nasty was brought into the lineup as like a substitute player they wanted to bring him over to the US to compete in the starting lineup and I was really excited to see that the SMG combo of Dylan and Nasty could have been really nice in my opinion doesn't happen though because of the visa situation the pandemic comes into effect and Shawnee gets his opportunity on the starting lineup initially kind of in an SMG role where he's certainly not as comfortable as he could be and then well he gets to the championship event for example scraps move into the SMG Shawnee goes on to that second AR behind Waskin and all of a sudden you actually have a really competent player in that role and as we've seen really from Shawnee in the last few years that he has had the opportunity to play in that role on the team so certainly very interesting Shawnee comes back of course part of the matter is as I said as as he was a substitute that means that he was only being paid maybe a substitute salary or something like that makes it much easier to sign back compared to scraps and waskin who are being paid absolute bank to our understanding the rest of the team as you could see over the last couple of minutes here is dylan cod being brought back once again here they are like officially release him and then re-sign him i imagine that means he's been re-signed at a lower salary then they also bring in alex from the minnesota rocker he's an interesting question mark as well because at the latter half of the modern warfare season on that minnesota rocker squad his uh, health his thumb issues were kind of the thing that people were talking about right like he had this issue with his son he had to step out of the team for a while even though he was so good early on in the modern warfare season his performances definitely fell off he had to step away someone else comes in then he comes back and he isn't quite as good right he isn't quite the same player which is certainly a concern for this coming season but in theory Alex was fantastic at the start of modern warfare I think people kind of forget how good this guy was and how highly rated he is by a number of the professional players and then to finish out the team you've got Trey Zero Morris this is obviously a fantastic pickup in my opinion I mean he's still there from the world championship right so then again like he seems like he's been released to some degree then brought back kind of interesting but at the same time like he was so good at the world championship especially this guy is super versatile in his play and honestly like if you think of versatile players and um, the players that are most adaptable the two that really come to mind are priest and number one and then zero to me like over multiple seasons zero's done it with the main assault rifle back at splice and infinite warfare when he won the stage one playoffs event with the mvp with like a 1.27 kd or something ridiculous ridiculous with the NV4 in hands. In more recent titles, we've seen him use the Sorg in Black Ops 4, the Maddox when it was required in most recent Modern Warfare, of course, we've seen him use the MP5, the M4, whenever necessary. Super versatile player, and in this team, in the Royal Ravens, he's actually going to be in the flex role, and that's really where, where the Royal Ravens, in my opinion, have some sort of leg up on some of the other competition, because a lot of teams right now are effectively hoping the meta is going to play out a certain way. If you look, for example, at the team that, um, well, Priest has joined, 
the other, probably the most versatile player in the league in my opinion, he's going to be stuck in an SMG role. You've got Attach and Priest on your SMGs, Major Maniac is your flex, and then Accuracy is your main AR. So in my opinion, that restricts Priest's effectiveness, because Priest is so good for his versatility, and yet by forcing him effectively into the SMG role, you're not getting that out of him. Whereas with Zero, he can run an AR, he can run an SMG, no problem at all, and him actually playing that nice flex role on this team means that whatever the meta happens to be for next season, London are well prepared. And that's not the case, I believe, with a number of other pro teams. That's really what Zero can bring to a squad, in addition to fantastic slang. Dylan Cod as well, of course, as your SMG line. No way you're going to get rid of this guy after the Black Ops 4 season he had. And there was a big, really, question mark around him in Modern Warfare. Why isn't he performing? Why aren't his stats where they were in Black Ops 4? And maybe the team thought and the staffing that Dylan Cobb was being left out to dry by Scraps and Waskin, right? And I think a lot of people have said that when Dylan played like 10s last year, he was absolutely frying. He was going off. He was unkillable. He felt like Black Ops 4 Dylan. But when you played against him in an actual match, it wasn't the same, right? And he didn't have the same statistical impact. And is that because he was being left out to dry to some degree? Is that because he was playing overly aggressively? Like it's not necessarily just the other guy's fault or just his fault. There's probably a mix of both. But we certainly saw at the opening events, maybe when Waskin had like a 1.4, the rest of the team felt like somewhat out to dry. And then at the World Championship where Waskin has like a 1.0, that's when they have their best events and come top four. But Dylan still doesn't have the best performance. So certainly interesting to see whether Dylan can bounce back. In my opinion, he seems like somewhat of a generational European talent. And, um, you know, let's not forget him. Black Ops 4, people were looking at Dylan and thinking, is this guy like a top three SMG? Is he a top five player in the game? Like that was a that was a conversation that was on the table at the time. So Alex confirms, we back, baby. You've got Shane here. I don't know why Sean is wearing his mask like that. But yeah, pretty entertaining stuff. And this, of course, is the team. Waskin says this, I have everything to back my case. Just know that we go under the radar and I'll be back with my bro. Just know that as well. Good luck to London. So, um, yeah, I mean, this is what he says. He's he, kind of cryptic, everything bent to back my case up. I don't really know what's going on here, but uh, yeah, maybe we'll see some more to come out of this if Waskin does get confirmed onto a team, which could be the Paris Legions we're going to talk about later today. This then is the team, and let's run through it. So let's start with the SMG line. Dylan, Cod, and Alex, right? In theory, I really think this SMG duo can be something special on this title. Dylan and Alex are very talented players. If they're in a comfortable situation playing with players that they're comfortable with, that, um, you know, leave them in good positions I suppose on the map because maybe they certainly thought the Scraps and Wiskin didn't necessarily do that in the previous season and there's certainly an argument to be made that when you're playing with Scraps and Wiskin you don't necessarily get the best um, well the best support I suppose and you know they bait you a little bit harder than maybe other players do and maybe that did come into the thought process here of London building this lineup we see of course both of these players have question marks around their heads as to whether they can get back to their previous level can Dylan be as effective as he was in Black Ops 4 I think it's possible is Alex going to be as good as he was before his thumb injury. If that is the case, I genuinely think this SMG line can compete with some of the best that we have seen from the other teams. Then we've got Trey Zero on this squad. I mean, he was just phenomenal. If there's a player, frankly, that I would pick up, like any player in the world, to represent a UK team, like the best just European player more generally than there has been over the last several years, certainly Zero for me. He can do with any weapon. Doesn't matter what. Um, yeah, he's been part of the, the team that actually did win an event for the European team on Spice back in Stage 1 playoffs. As we looked at, he can play pretty much any role. Trey is an absolute no-brainer and he was fantastic at the World Championship. The big question mark people are coming up with, right, is Shawnee, right? Like, he's the main assault rifle on this team. Is he going to be as good? Could you have got, like, rated in? Could you have kept Waskin or something like that? I imagine the thought process here, potentially from the London guys, is yes, he was on a substitute salary, so it's probably easier to extend him. But at the same time, Shawnee's played with these guys in the past, as we're going to look at here in just a second. He was a great assault rifle back in the day. And also, you've got to think about chemistry, right? If these guys are enjoying playing the game, Shawnee seems like a really easygoing guy, great to work with. The London staff seem to like him. The rest of the team seem to like him. If this team gets on well, and I think there was some friction last season with Scraps and Waskin, there was the whole Warzone question as well. They were like chalking scrims to play Warzone tourneys. Whether that was their fault or whether the Royal Ravens were pushing them to do that, that is certainly another question. But it seemed to me that chemistry was sometimes a concern on that team last season. Surely is going to get along with these guys no problem at all. And if these guys really enjoy playing the game, this team can be deadly, right? Because I can see a number of other teams in the league right now, which maybe their chemistry isn't necessarily going to be there. Like, are they actually going to grind the game super hard? These guys are super grinders. Like, they'll play the game super long hours. Shawnee especially has been talking about with, like, the coaches at the end of the season. He really listened to feedback, really tried to improve, really helped the team in that sense. And um, I think that's probably what London are going for this season. And if it does work out, it's an interesting idea because in theory, right, you keep a guy like Waskin or something, like, who has more slaying power in that main assault rifle role. But Shawnee's a good player. And if he does add some intangibles, I guess, to the 
rest of the team, then how much does your assault rifle really matter if the rest of your team is firing on all cylinders? And uh, well, that's a big question mark. And maybe at some point, Zero is the main AR and surely becomes the, the flex, I suppose, the second main AR. Maybe that's already what they're looking as a possibility. And if that is the case, I can definitely see Zero competing with some of the best assault rifles in the game. The slaying power is certainly here. So I do like this team. Really, the question though is like, when you look at this squad compared to some of the other squads in the league, are they good enough, right? And I just wanted to look back very quickly. The Union Lad team, for example, in World War II, played with Shawnee and um, you know, Zed is a question mark. Who's going to be their substitute on this squad? Could be this guy, possibly. So, you know, Waskin, Shawnee, Alex, and Zed back in World War II. Then in the Black Ops 4 days, you had the Reciprocity team with Dylan on the team. And, um, you know, also in the most recent times, Alex went on to Minnesota Rocker, has then come back to his home guys. This is just a quick look at Zero's career. So, first at the Stage 1 playoffs, as we looked at, uh, well, a few minutes ago. Then throughout the World War II Black Ops 4 season, largely on the Red Reserve squad without some of these guys. Then he played with Scraps on Phase and Red Reserve, of course. And then this most recent season, coming onto the Royal Ravens alongside Waskin at Scraps, Dylan and Shawnee. So he played with Dylan and Shawnee for a while, had a great result at the World Championship, then bringing in Alex into the team. But minus Waskin, minus Scraps, is the slaying power too far gone to make this team competitive for next season? That is the big question mark, right? And when you look at these statistics from the World Championships, for example, it's not exactly great. Yes, this team, the London team, came fourth. And a lot of people would say, like Crim6, some of the teams they played weren't playing for the win. The other teams that they were well, matched up against that gave them these bad KDs were just playing at four good KDs so that they would actually um, retain their spot into a four versus four environment. But Dylan, 0.85. Shawnee, 0.97. Even though Shawnee was very influential with that 0.97, you guys will remember many key moments where he turned up for the squad. Zero with a 1.01. He had a phenomenal chance, all things considered, even though the KD doesn't necessarily reflect it. And Alex, not with the best event again, but uh, yeah, Minnesota Rocker kind of got crushed in their tournament. So I'm very intrigued to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. As Octane's Burner here says, no twins, no wins. So is that going to be a, well, a problem for this team? Is it going to be a chance at the Lex London event if these guys do fall short? And well, do you think this team can actually compete? Can they make a grand final? Can they make a top four? I certainly think it's very possible if the stars align, but there's just other teams out there in theory with greater slaying power right now, even though the actual way this team has been formed, I think can be very nice indeed. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy it, I'd greatly appreciate a like on the video. It really helps out the YouTube algorithm no, you enjoyed this content. Other people like you may enjoy this content as well. Thank you for watching as always. Take care and I will see you next time.